Jane, it's an absolute pleasure to be up on the stage with you today Me and too. particularly talking about some of the goals that Unilever is setting. Um, I think I speak for the whole audience when um, many of us look to Unilever for setting some really ambitious targets, specifically mm -hmm. when it comes to sustainability. And of course, we're used to talking about decarbonisation in general, but Unilever is choosing to focus its efforts specifically around waste reduction and regenerative agriculture. Why is it this focus in particular that you're looking at? Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Katie, for this question. Actually, I think uh, there's uh, several reasons. One is that uh, a quite big part of our business is actually relevant and linked very much with agriculture and commodity. So we are determined to achieve net zero, so this is a big chunk of the agenda. And second, I think it's a focus also because we have a big footprint link with all those activity. I cannot specific quote a name, but it's really a big chunk of the, uh, 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 the footprint. Uh, third, I think um, when we talk about, we focus on dairy, on soybean, uh, on uh, vegetable, on tomatoes, we know that it's relevant to our portfolio. We know that we can make a difference. So thus, it's a strong combination among consumer, brand purpose, and also the business purpose. Which is something that you've, Unilever has always been really strong in, right? Yeah, sort of yeah. connecting their greater brand purpose with yeah. all the way what's going on in supply chain and procurement. Um, but of course, you're a supply chain practitioner, yeah. but we're here at Digital Procurement World. And it'll be great to get some of your perspectives on the role that you see procurement taking in helping to develop these kinds of strategies for programs around sustainability. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I think uh, it's, uh, I have to say procurement is actually play a very critical role. The reason is that we know that we want to build a program long lasting and impactful. Thus you need to, that Unilever cannot do it by ourselves. You have to bring everybody in, it's including our all suppliers, farmers, buyers, and our suppliers, and also some specialist expertise. So you have to bring everybody together. So procurement play a key role. And also I think uh, um, it's quite interesting that it's not an easy journey. So you actually need to build a proper commercial relationship mm -hmm. to drive the agenda together. In that sense, procurement is really critical and will be in the front line on all those agendas. And I can just take several examples. Say uh, we have uh, uh, our soybean program in North America. And that is actually a partnership uh, linking with Unilever, ADM, PepsiCo, and also the uh, practical farmers in lower to really make the execution and impact, to land the transformation for the regenerative agriculture. And also a program in India for tomato. We have been built many years commercial relationship to focus on the yield, on the water, and also on the living wage. So that, without procurement, is no way to do and to execute. Absolutely, and I'm sure um, everyone in the audience agrees with that summation. Um, but how has procurement really come to play such a key role within Unilever? Has it been something that the procurement function has had to push? Mm -hmm. Or has it also come from the business and, and pulling them in because they realize the fundamental role that they play? Mm -hmm. What has that looked like sure. at Unilever? I have to say the interplay with procurement, with supply chain, with business is really strong. I think we're lucky uh, uh, to be working in Unilever. We do have a very clear compass strategy, focus on the sustainability, on the old good things we want to drive. We call it really our compass and our purpose. Um, so it has to be start from a strategy. It's not one function. So it has to be an overall corporate strategy. Then you bring everybody together. Then procurement can be with our sustainable sourcing, uh, the expertise and the supply chain and all the relevant functions to bring both the sustainability agenda and also the commercial agenda at the same time. If you purely talk about sustainability, no commercialization and no business, you will not implement it. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's uh, really, really critical. Maybe uh, one key element I want to highlight here is that 
uh, its specific link with the challenge. As I think it's not an easy journey, either drive the waste-free world or drive the regenerative uh, the agriculture. We need to actually do a lot of pilots and learning curve, and also scaling up. Though we talk about scaling up, but it's not easy. It's not that you have a one successful case in one uh, crops and you, in one geography, you can roll out everywhere. There's no one fit for all solution. I think the different crops in the different geography, their challenge, their approach, their solution will be very different. There's a very different agriculture in the different geography. So you have to drive more program to cover more crops to be in the transition to a regenerative agriculture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm going to go slightly off script here for a second, but um, could you perhaps share some details with us around some of the pilots that you've run? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we are saying, say, uh, in India, we actually have a longer-term relationship with uh, some uh, 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 one of the, uh, the biggest farmer collectives. So uh, they actually, I think, uh, they now link with more than 10,000 farmers together and link with our beautiful Kisan uh, uh, product, who is a ketchup. And uh, then we uh, build the end-to-end -end solutions to really uh, monitor uh, the, uh, uh, the whole uh, healthness of uh, the land, the, uh, the, uh, the soil, and also the water stewardship. And at the same time, there's a big security for the farmers to make sure that they have a stable demand then make sure that the farmer business is become a rewarding business. So it's not only we are doing good, but also really doing a viable business for every farmers. Uh, and more interesting that we uh, drive more living age and more diversity agenda in that, in that India uh, the example. The, uh, the owners of the farmers, we are actually uh, collaborative together. It's actually uh, shared, say, 40% of their farmers. And also, we jointly build a manufacturing uh, for Unilever. 40% of the employees and the farmers are female. So it's really fantastic progress there. That's fantastic. And um, you, as the chief product supply officer for nutrition, um, and also a question for all of the startups here today, when you're running pilots with startups that you know at some point are going to have to scale up, and um, you know I can never get over the sheer scale of Unilever, what is it that you're looking for within that pilot and within the capabilities of the startup to give you the reassurance that they will be a partner that you can build a relationship with long mm. into the future? Sure. Um, I think it's a very good question, and it's not a very easy uh, to, uh, mm. uh, to answer a question. I'm really happy to also, when we're waiting, I'm also hear some uh, good pitch of the, uh, uh, the startup. And I really think to drive this program, uh, two things is critical. One is that you really need the technology. You really need the new technique. So uh, you need the new technique to uh, find a solution. Uh, you, you need the new technology to be able to measure and track your progress to make sure you're really on the right track. And the other thing is uh, really um, quite critical is uh, innovation on the building the relationship and the commercial relationship. So what is the right approach to be work and collaborate with startup, with technical company, with expertise, with suppliers will be really, really critical. So for me, I think it's um, collaboration and also new approach is the name of the game. So uh, you need to really try and pilot and error, then you will know what you will be specific needed. Mm. Fantastic, and I think you know we're, we're hearing more and more that it really is collaboration and those relationships that are going to drive that innovation, specifically when it is in relation to ESG goals. And so that takes us then back to procurement. Um, when you think about some of the challenges that your teams have faced within Unilever, specifically when it is around implementing your programs for regenerative agriculture, waste reduction. How have you had to see, see procurement really have to step up and take on new challenges in order to serve the company better? Sure. I think uh, we have the clear focus and the strategy within the organization. 
so in that sense, I think procurement is really in a very beautiful and nice place that you do not really have to manage a conflict among the sustainability agenda, regenerative, uh, uh, the agriculture agenda or waste agenda versus your commercial agenda. For us, really, we combine. There's only one agenda combined, both sustainability and the commercial uh, together. So in that sense, I think pro uh, our procurement team is really, and also supply chain team, is live in a very nice and beautiful uh, places. I think I have to say the key challenge, I would like to say two parts. One is really the uh, specialist, uh, the understanding and expertise. I think it's a basically very new, uh, new area for everybody to uh, explore. So as a procurement expert, we should not just get satisfied, say, I'm a perfect professional procurement uh, people. You have to keep learning to understand what is a new technology, new technique in the, uh, in the market, then you can, add, uh, you can actually go ahead or say, uh, try and error. And then I think the second specific challenge I said is a bit of the scale. So when you have to scale up, it's not an easy thing, say one, then you can roll out to all the others. It's really a very complicated and somehow it's a dirty job mm -hmm. that you have to just drive more program to cover more crops and to understand all the granularity in a different geography, their challenge, their solution. So that will, it's a, it sounds really nice and good, but in reality, when you execute it, when you track it, when you do it, it's really a dirty job, I say. But when you really can make it and crack it, it's a, such a great achievement and the feeling that you can really feel. Yeah, there's nothing like feeling like you're on the right track. Exactly. Um, especially when it comes to those relationships. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to what I'm hearing is, you know, there's an absolute demand for these programs to have true kind of collaborative dynamics at the heart of them. Whereas you say everyone realizes that nobody has the answers, um, but they all have expertise that they can bring to the table mm -hmm. to help find solutions. Um, to what extent have, has this really led to uncovering true innovation with your suppliers? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, as I previously said, there's a two, uh, the two part. One is really talk about the technology. Uh, we uh, talk about some dairy and vegetable uh, the program uh, in France, in Netherlands, and also uh, uh, in the uh, UK. Uh, we did need to test the different technology. So we actually, internally and externally, we meet a lot of startup to understand what is the niche things and unique things you can, uh, uh, you can find. Uh, then I think the second point is really linked with the, what is the creativity and openness uh, we are and we want to try to build a new commercial uh, the relationship. I think when you talk about all the sustainability, the agenda, especially linked with the waste-free or regenerative agriculture, the target and also the measurement has to be much longer term. Uh, instead of immediate, you will see the saving, you will see the result in this year. So how to build a much longer term relationship mm -hmm. and how to build a more creative and innovative way uh, from commercial uh, sense and the relationship will be really, really uh, critical. And in that sense, we're really open uh, to uh, try very different uh, the approach in that sense. But I think it's critical to yeah. drive the agenda. I, I think for vendors and startups who are, who are here, it, it's great to hear that there's a longer term mm -hmm. vision and an understanding that um, there aren't going to be you know, huge amounts of ROI that you can suddenly start to prove six to 12 months down the line, mm -hmm. that you're looking a little bit sort of further afield. Um, have you had to really get a lot of understanding and um, declaration, I guess, from right from the top down, sorry, top down, <laughs> yeah. um, to, to drive that understanding within the organization mm -hmm. so that everybody is pushing for longer term mm -hmm. quality versus short term? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, basically, I would like to say for Unilever, we do have a great gene. Uh, and sometimes I, uh, as I, I have been with Unilever for more than 25 years, so uh, this is also one uh, great 
the one of the greatest genes I really love for this organization, and that's the reason why I stay uh, 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 for, for so long. So I think uh, uh, doing good and try to find a purpose for every individual and also for the company is really something very fundamental and rooted uh, in, uh, in this organization. And, uh, and maybe, uh, maybe opposite to a lot of other uh, the, uh, companies, our challenge is that we do have a very long-term vision and we look the value and the values at the same time. And we uh, more or less we have uh, tools to be more focused on longer term and the medium term instead of somehow we will have a bit of tension for the short term. Uh, I, have to, I have to be very open that uh, link with the sustainability agenda, you will not always immediately to, to see the benefit for the, uh, for, uh, for the short term. Or I have to say you need to invest continuously for many years before you can realize some great the achievement. I have talked about the example uh, of the, uh, the tomato program we have been driving in India with uh, one, uh, one, uh, the, the greatest uh, the farmer company. And that owner has been lost money for eight years before finally you see the achievement and, and, and result. So in that sense, you need to really have the consistency and determination and also a bit of the patience. I think uh, uh, it's not easy and you really need to stick it and you believe it's right before you can really see the benefit. Mm. Absolutely. And this leads on quite nicely to my next question, yeah. which is, Really, if we, we take Unilever as an example of a very large matrix organization, of which there are many, many other examples. In fact, you, you mentioned working with a few of them and collaborating with them on these programs. Mm -hmm. um, is there a requirement for these large organizations to have to simplify their operations in order to see more success with programs like the ones that you are running and specifically in relation to working with startups? Sure. Um, I think uh, um, several uh, the points. Um, first is that I will go back again. You need to have a clear strategy and you need to put that in the core of your strategy. It has to be a total company, uh, the agenda. It's not one uh, of uh, the uh, function. Then I think second, that you need to be really a joint force uh, uh, together. Uh, you need to have the team to work as a joint force to drive one agenda. That will be really including uh, your supply chain, your procurement, your specialist, and also your, uh, your sustainable the, uh, uh, the sourcing experts to, uh, to drive it together. And you, then you do not have too much conflict in the different functions. And it will be, uh, help a lot to uh, drive the, uh, the, the agenda in a much sim the, uh, the simpler way. And then I think the last um, the point is really um, do collaboration, collaboration, collaboration with <laughs> everybody. Try to find in your ecosystem. It's no way that you can do everything by yourself. It's really a very new journey. You need to acquire new knowledge. You need to acquire new approach and a new solution. So um, has to be there. Uh, last, but I think it's very critical, is that everything make sure you communicate it and openly and instantly. Then you can make the decision and you can get engagement very, very quickly. And really in the business world, who is better positioned to enable collaboration than procurement. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> As we wrap up now, um, really in talking about these programs and the work that Unilever does, what's, what's the call to action today mm -hmm. when we look out at the audience here? Um, what is it that the audience can do in relation to these programs that you're running that will really help us to move the needle? On sure. decarbonization. Sure. Uh, thank you. I think I may start here to repeat myself a bit, but I think it's uh, going back to the core point I tried to say uh, in uh, this session. The first is really a corporate strategy. You have to be uh, in the core card of the things. If you do not have the, uh, the determination and in the center of your strategy, it's just no way for you to, uh, uh, to drive. As I said, it's not a very commercial viable in the short term, uh, the, the agenda, and, and it's also a quite complicated and difficult agenda. Second, I think when you define that as a clear strategy, then uh, line up all your resources with your suppliers, with your specialists, with your buyers, with your, uh, uh, your consumers. Uh, sometimes uh, together. Then I think the third point is that um, be prepared for a hard journey 
don't underestimate the challenges and the learning curve you will, you will, you will need. It takes time and it takes a lot of effort. You need to have a lot of failures before you can reach to the success. And 10 years, 10 years ago when Unilever made a commitment on the sustainable sourcing and the plastic the agenda, we don't have all the answers. And the same for today, when we say we are committed to drive the waste-free world and also to uh, make the regenerative agriculture, we don't have the solution. We are keep learning. And then last, but definitely not least, I think there's a need. It's good for the planet, it's good for farmers, it's also good for our business, the resilience. And it's also an inspiration for people. We see a lot of people wanting to join us in this journey. And I do hope a lot of you will be with us together. Thanks a lot. Brilliant. Jennifer, thank you so much. Thank you.